This is our veterinary fluid bubbler. Uh, you'll see that it comes with a really thick silicone tubing here to uh, minimize any kinking. It's got a spin lure lock at the end here uh, that's out of ozone resistant materials. Of course we have the the fluid egress in the bottom of the bubbler here to make it a lot easier to get fluids out uh, instead of having to suck them or draw them out through the top. Um, of course you fill through the top. We also have a destruct uh, integrated into this particular unit um, which neutralizes excess ozone. Um, so that's the exhaust for that. And we've got a, a uh, micro bubbler diffuser stone in the bottom here and of course you have the the graduated lines that tell you how much fluid you have in the bubbler this can be hung on an IV pole we have a setup for that we also have something to um, be able to just to uh, stabilize it on a countertop in that scenario so that's our our fluid bubbler and uh, there's a couple pieces that come alongside of that. So the first thing is our stainless steel funnel to help you get the fluids in. Make sure you don't spill as you're doing that. We also have this little just adapter um, which allows you uh, to adapt so that you can insert an IV administration kit line into the bottom of the bubbler um, and run fluids directly from the bubbler to the patient. So that's very, very helpful to be able to do that. You're gonna get a one-way stopcock with that and a couple hydrophobic valves as well. The hydrophobic valves just keep uh, fluid from potentially getting into your generator. It's just kind of a safety feature there um, just to ensure that never happens. And uh, I'll show you a little bit more about how to set this up and how to use it here in a second. So let's jump into that. What we're going to do next is show you how to attach this bubbler to either to the tabletop stand or to the IV pole. We're going to start with the tabletop stand here. Uh, so let's take a look at that. Um, first you're going to, you're going to get uh, a chain clamp. It's going to come with a boss clamp. Uh, it's going to come with a steel rod. And it's also going to come with a really heavy iron plate um, as well. So those are the different components that you'll be using. Uh, first thing you're going to do if you're putting this tabletop stand together is go ahead and just screw this into the plate there um, until it's tight. Uh, the next thing you can do is just slide your boss clamp. There's two of these threaded uh, bolts on there so you can slide your, your, your boss clamp right over the top of that. You're going to have to loosen it up so that it can make its way in there and then uh, you can go ahead and Tighten that down in there. Um, next thing we can do is actually take our, uh, this is called a chain clamp, and we can uh, go ahead and slide that right in here as well after we have this loosened up sufficiently so that I can do that. Um, and then uh, you can just leave it right there for now is, is good. Um, and then we're going to take our bubbler and we're going to put it on there and uh, now I'm going to go ahead and pull the chain around that and I'm going to hook the chain to the other side. Now if it doesn't quite reach that's because you're going to have to loosen this first so it's easier to do that with this off. I'll show you here, just loosen this wing nut right up and that'll give you enough slack to go ahead and, and to get your chain clamp um, on there now. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back on and put this around and I'll hook it on over here on this side there and now we've got we've got this set up I'm gonna go ahead and lower this actually to about there that looks like a good height for me um, and the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and snug this chain up so you can hopefully see there I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this wing nut and keep kind of a some uh, my fingers here so that I can feel when that's tight. I don't want to over tighten it. It is glass, but it actually shouldn't really move much once I'm, I'm done tightening that. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Um, and, uh, there we go. That's, that's good for me. Um, now I've pushed this back as far as it's going to go pretty much onto the, uh, uh, plate here so I can tighten this down on the chain clamp now. And uh, that's all nice and snug and tight. Um, and then that's, that's basically it. That's going to keep this from tipping. Um, if, 
anything smacks into it, you know, and, and pushes it over, um, it won't push easily at this point. So that is the tabletop unit. Let's take a look at how to attach your bubbler to an IV pole. The first thing you're going to do, need to do is get this boss clamp onto the IV pole. Well, for the one that comes with our ozonation station cart, um, it has a little hook that you can just pull off um, and uh, then you have enough room to go ahead and slide your boss clamp down over the uh, pole. And I can put my hook back on. And uh, okay, the next step is actually going to be to go ahead and take this uh, piece of chain with the two carabiners and I'm going to attach those to the top of my vet bubbler. We've got some glass loops there, so I'm just going to go ahead and clip those on. Um, that'll be nice and secure and then I'm going to slide it um, over the top of one of these hooks there. Um, and I'll put this sideways so you can kind of see it better. The next step is going to be to take my chain clamp and I'm going to go ahead and slide that into my boss clamp. I'll turn this sideways so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to move that back. Just a quick note, this uh, wing nut here has to be fairly loose. Uh, it's got to be up towards the, the back of this um, so that you can attach it to your bubbler. So anyways, I'm going to slide that on there. Um, I'm going to leave it out towards the end so that I have a little room. I'll show you why in a second. And then I'm just going to turn that so that it lines up with my bubbler. I'm going to take that chain, I'll move this around this way, and I'm actually going to uh, attach it here to the little uh, hook that's on this side of my chain clamp. And I can go ahead and uh, move this back around the other way. You can see better. I'm going to tighten this wing nut down. Uh, so that it, it snugs this chain up. I want to keep my fingers here on the chain just to make sure I don't over tighten it. Um, but again, I don't really want it to be able to move. Uh, there should be some tension on there. Tighten it down too much, you're probably going to shatter this thing. That's never happened, but I'm sure it could. So um, just be aware of that. And then this is uh, going to go ahead and slide up through, um, through one of these hooks. Really doesn't matter how you do this. Um, I just like to to put it up through here uh, so that it, it doesn't kink and it's, um, it just kind of stays out of your way. And, and so there you go. Um, that's, the, that's the setup for your bubbler uh, to an IV pole. That's all there is to it. Once you have your bubbler set up and stabilized either on the IV pole or on this tabletop stand, the next thing we're going to want to do is figure out how to operate this thing and make it work, right? So let's fill it with a fluid. We typically use either normal saline or distilled water. Normal saline is optimal. Um, it's most uh, common. So we're just going to go ahead and fill this up about 250 to anywhere between 250 and 1500 mLs is good. The nice thing about ozone is it sterilizes the fluid every single time you use it. Uh, so you don't have to use that fluid all up in one shot. Um, you can let it uh, sit in there. Once we have the fluid in, we're going to take our cap and we're going to just screw that down finger tight until it's secure. Um, of course, you're going to want to make sure your valve is off here so that you, you don't get fluid out. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and connect this to our generator. If you have um, whatever generator you have, this is the Ozonet. Uh, you're going to want to use a hydrophobic valve. This makes sure we never get fluid into the generator on accident. If we leave this connected, let's stay overnight, which again, you should never do. You should disconnect um, as soon as you're done, just to make sure you don't get fluid in there. So you're going to tighten that down, and then you're going to go ahead and run um, your whatever your parameters are for, for that particular treat uh, fluid ozonation process. Uh, we'll set it to 15 liters per hour here and set our timer at what we want it. And then we'll just go ahead and let that bubble for a period of time. Once that's done, then we can draw it up and utilize the fluid. So as you can see here, uh, we're, we're off and running and we're getting our bubbles into the unit, um, into the fluid. So we'll let that run and then we'll come back.
Okay, now that we're done bubbling, we have a couple different options, but first we're going to go ahead and disconnect it from, from our generator. I'll move this over so that we have a little more room here. And then um, the first option is to just go ahead and draw ozone up, the ozonated fluid up into a, a, an ozone syringe. Uh, so we'll just connect it to the one-way stopcock, open that stopcock, and just draw the fluid out. Now that's option number one. Option number two, I can demonstrate part of it because I don't have the right pieces here today. Um, option number two is to connect our little adapter that's for an IV administration kit set uh, with a spike on the end of that. Usually they have a drip chamber. You don't need one for this, of course, but uh, that's just gonna connect here to your bubbler and then you're going to open the valve. You're gonna put a spike in here first um, that has a line, usually they're about eight foot long, then you can run the fluids directly, gravity flow from either your IV pole or from the tabletop to, to the floor where the patient is or wherever the patient, you have the patient, you can rub, run fluids subcutaneously, etc. So that is how you draw fluids up from the bubbler. So if you ever have trouble with your, your bubbler, um, most commonly what happens is the destruct material will get wet and uh, if it gets wet, you're gonna smell ozone. So the destruct material will last indefinitely. Uh, you just need to dry it out. So basically, um, what you do is you will take your, your unit here and you'll remove the cap uh, from the destruct. Um, you'll take the filter off and then underneath the filter is our activated carbon. That's a special type of that. And uh, we'll go ahead and dump the fluid out of the jar first, um, and then we'll, we'll dump our, our carbon out onto a paper towel, um, onto a baking sheet. If you have a, a heat source, you can dry it out faster. Um, but if you don't, you can just let it sit on that paper towel overnight, and, and then it should be good to go. You can dump it back in, and then off you go um, again. So that's if you're smelling ozone coming from the bubbler, uh, you can use your nose just to find out where it's coming from uh, again and just kind of uh, do the little sniff, sniff test on that um, to see if it's there or I've seen um, sometimes these uh, lure locks would get, will get cracked um, and so those could be leaking. Uh, people have cut the tube before. Um, so there's different things that could happen as far as that goes. If you're smelling ozone, you want to check and find out where that smell is coming from, first of all. If you need to ever replace this tubing, it's really just making a slit with a razor blade here, peeling this one off and, and either cutting a section off or getting a replacement tube from us. Um, the same thing goes for the port here at the bottom. You can always get that replaced as well fairly easily. Those are very simple things to do. Uh, so that's a little bit about your bubbler.